everybody, and welcome back to Markers and Monsters, where the who a 2017 continues today, and we are drawing the third Doctor. Now, the third Doctor was the Doctor from 1970 until 1974, and he was played with great aplomb by John Pertwee. And the third Doctor is a, a great character. Um, well, probably not my favorite Doctor of all time. He's definitely up there in like the top five, I'd say. Um, I really like this guy. He's got a, a great just sense of, uh, I don't know, style and fun. Uh, he's an older gentleman with this big shock of white hair sitting on top of his head and this weird kind of Edwardian dress with a frilly shirt and like he wears a cape and stuff like that. And uh, while he's an older guy, he's still a man of action, which I love. Um, he's still smart and intelligent and doesn't, you know, resort to violence unless he, you know, has to for the most part. But he does also practice a Venusian Aikido. So, uh, yeah, if you ever want to see the Dr. Karate chopping aliens in the face, this is your guy. Um, great time, a lot of fun. Uh, the third Doctor stories were rather interesting, as the uh, second Doctor ended his run by being banished to Earth by the Time Lords. So his TARDIS was uh, rendered inoperative. He couldn't fly around in time or in space. Uh, on his own free will, of course, there were times when he'd have to go somewhere, he'd be summoned or teleported or whatever. But uh, a lot of these stories took place on Earth. The third Doctor uh, became the scientific advisor to UNIT, which is an organization dedicated to, like, uh, preventing, you know, kind of like alien threats and stuff like that. Kind of like Torchwood, but not quite. Definitely more of a, like, a branch of the full military. So the Doctor would have his lab set up with this inoperative TARDIS. Uh, he could still go inside of it and still uh, use like the labs inside the TARDIS and tinker with gadgets and stuff like that, but uh, couldn't really travel anywhere. And uh, from here, one of the... It's not a full companion, but one of the uh, uh, most popular characters, uh, Colonel Lethbridge Stewart, was uh, the head of unit at the time, or I don't know if he was the head, but a high-ranking guy in unit at the time. And, uh, you know, they'd always, uh, Colonel Stewart was uh, very by the book and matter of fact, and the doctor can tend to be kind of, uh, I don't know if fun loving is the right word, but kind of out there sometimes. So uh, great chemistry between the two actors here that, uh, you know, that, that did it. And I don't know, just good stuff all around. Now, as you can see in the background, I am drawing the doctor and he is sitting in a weird looking yellow car and the car is Bessie. Uh, being that the doctor had, his TARDIS was inoperable, he needed a little transportation, so he built, uh, Bessie here, uh, which is this yellow, uh, weird-looking roadster car. Uh, now this car, it's actually, uh, doesn't really, like, uh, exist in the sense that you couldn't have gone to a dealership and just bought this thing. It was a kit car. Um, and I guess there were about a hundred of them produced at the time. And basically you provided your own, uh, chassis. And this one was off of a Ford Prefect, an E93A chassis. And yes, Ford Prefect, another weird connection between Doctor Who and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but I digress. Um, and then you get this fiberglass kit put on top of it and the kit was uh it's called an edwardian roadster which is perfect uh based on the doctor's uh, preferred the way he dressed kind of like an edwardian gentleman and uh this car looks like it would be if cars were being made in like the i don't know you know 1890s or something like that you know very uh like just old school looking so, um, yeah, very cool little car that he'd uh, hop around in. He, of course, made some enhancements to it, like increasing the speed, adding in, like, a remote control device, stuff like that, very James Bond-ish kind of stuff. And he'd hop around that. Uh, the car appeared, Bessie appeared in 11 regular episodes of the Third Doctor's run, and then uh, she'd later go on to pop up here and there in cameos. He drove it in the Five Doctors during the Fifth Doctor's run, the Seventh Doctor... Uh, had one in an episode. The license plate on the front, which unfortunately you can't see due to the angle I'm dr you know, of the drawing I'm making here, but it said, Who won? Which was very cool. And uh, when the Seventh Doctor got the car, it said, Who Seven on it? Oh, very nice. 
So, uh, yeah, very fun stuff. And uh, I kind of just wanted to draw the third Doctor here, just like driving around, having fun. The last minute, I decided to throw in a TARDIS in the background there, just, just for fun. He's driving past it and Bessie. And, uh, yeah, I thought that would be a lot of fun. Now, I will say about the drawing here that I'm doing, uh, as you could see, I'm, I'm still in the markering stages, just kind of going to put in that sky now. But um, I really feel like I didn't do a uh, super great job on uh, John Pertwee's face with this one. You'll see, too, once I ink the whole thing. He kind of looks a lot like Harpo Marx. Uh, rest assured, I tried to make it the third Doctor, but if you want to think that it's Harpo Marx as the Doctor, then be my guest. That's pretty fun, too. <laughs> But yeah, he was a lot of fun to draw, and uh, it's been a while since I've drawn a car of any kind. Um, and especially this thing has tons of weird angles and, you know, strange things. The uh, the hood's really small. Uh, it's got mud flaps that go over the wheels and you know, this crazy canary yellow. So uh, it was a ton of fun to draw, I have to say. I'd actually been uh, doing some sketches before I got into this, drawing a lot of the car, just trying to capture its, you know, essential look and feel and stuff like that. And I think the car turned out pretty great. I'm not uh, too keen on the third Doctor's face, but you know what? Oh, well, they can't all be uh, super great winners, I guess, you know. Sometimes it just doesn't come out too hot. But... You know, like I said, that's okay. We're just here having fun, and these marker drawings to me are more of just a way to just have fun and get something done in, you know, a uh, relatively short amount of time. I think this guy, all when all was said and done, took me about two hours to do. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty quick. Just sit down and, and get her done. But, uh, yeah, it was a ton of fun to draw. Um, I'm putting in now on the back behind the uh, raised upper seat in the back. There is the rolled up uh, soft top canopy that he can um, uh, unfurl and kind of, uh, you know, add down onto the top of the car. It gives a slipping roof in case it's raining or whatever. Now, the third Doctor 2, uh, this is an interesting run. Uh, the first of the series to be broadcast in color or to be shot in color, I should say. And uh, that would continue on forever. It never went back to uh, black and white from that moment. Also, the Doctor's first story, Spearhead from Space, uh, was shot on film, interestingly enough, um, instead of just, like, being shot on, you know, video or, or whatever else they use. But, yeah, actual, like, uh, film like you would shoot a movie in. So that's a story you can actually buy today on Blu-ray, and it looks fantastic. Uh, because it's on film, it's got all that detail and crisp crispness, and it just turned out really great so that's really cool a neat thing they did but uh, yeah going into color they never went back and uh, I, I think that works out Doctor Who's a very kind of a colorful uh, you know show it's it's just I don't know got all these monsters and space aliens and cool stuff like that so hey who wouldn't uh, who wouldn't enjoy that you know uh, let's put in some details here on the side of the hood the little uh, intake slats and stuff like that are very cool um, and get that TARDIS going here. So yeah, third Doctor's run. I really enjoyed John Pertwee, like I had said. Uh, he brought a lot to the character and just seemed like a cool guy, you know. Um, he had some great companions. We talked about Colonel Lethbridge Stewart. But I would say the main companion uh, of his that I would associate with uh, Pertwee is Joe Grant. Uh, she was in most of his run. Also in his last uh, season, Sarah Jane Smith. All right, let's put in those uh, uh, uprights there that come from the hood. Take a look at the scan. There we go. Like I said, the face is a little goofy, but uh, hey, you know what? I had fun drawing it. I had a ton of fun drawing Bessie and uh, a ton of fun drawing a TARDIS. It just, this was an all-around nice one to do. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed myself. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Let me know who your favorite Doctor is or give me some cool trivia about the third Doctor. I love this kind of stuff, and I love talking about it. So, yeah, very cool. So uh, that's it for me, you guys. Reverse the polarity, and we'll see you on the next episode of Markers and Monsters Doctor Whoathon.